But I tell you something that does exist, which does come close. Don't freak out. This might be a short video. Yeah. Is there a hell? Is there a place where you burn for all of eternity? By the way, to mention all of eternity, you it's really hard to fathom such a distance in time. Not unless you've actually experienced some kind of warping of reality through either astral projection or a DMT trip, you know, experiencing the ego death. You can't really fathom what it would be like to burn for all of eternity. I'm just gonna, I was gonna put that out there. I mean, you could always wonder, but then you would hit a brick wall. It's like, burn for all eternity, and, and then your mind just goes blank. Getting back onto my topic. Does hell actually exist? Now, I am an astral projectioner. I have been faced with so much scrutiny, <laughs> so much verbal abuse because of the skill that I have, that I developed, that I was born with, okay, and that is to leave my body. Honestly, if I had never astral projected before, and then I had just come across somebody you know, one day who had told me that they can do this, I would honestly ask them straight away. My first question would be, is there a hell? And does heaven exist? It wouldn't even be, is there a God? It'd be, does hell exist? Now, why would I say that? Well, I would say that because I'd be terrified, most likely. And if I'd never known what's after this life, am I going to burn? Have I sinned? Apparently everyone sins, and you know, it's true. The seven deadly sins, people already do, and they're not even aware of it. If I couldn't actually project, if I didn't know what I know today, honestly, yeah, I'd be afraid. Because based on what everyone else is saying, I should be in hell when I die. I've done so much wrong within my life that well, I must be punished, right? But all of this doesn't make sense once you, you know, you've been to the other side and you've seen what's actually there. Does hell exist? Hmm. In the way that everyone else thinks it does? No. From what I've seen, from what I've experienced, eternal hellfire? A guy with red skin and horns with a pointy pitchfork on a throne, watching people carrying boulders chained by the ankles. Hot, humid air. No oxygen in the air. It's just evaporated. You can't breathe. People being tortured by demons upside down, maybe slingshots, with, <laughs> not with stones or eggs, but with like spiked stones. You know, little, my imagination is pretty. It doesn't exist, guys, it doesn't exist. But i tell you something that does exist, which does come close. Don't freak out, because there's no reason to. You are in control of where you end up after you die, okay? If you're afraid of drowning, if to you drowning in a dark place is hell, not knowing where you are, not knowing who you are, that freezing, frigid feeling on your skin, maybe even hearing whispers in the darkness of the cold depths of the ocean, salt so overwhelming that it's filling your lungs and your taste buds and your nasal cavity. If that is hell to you, and you believe that you should be there because you believe that you should be punished, your subconscious mind is powerful. It's going to create that environment within the afterlife, not within your mind. No, oh, no. You'll be outside of the body. So you'll automatically be transported to the etheric plane, <laughs> the plane of existence which deals with thought forms. It deals with the environment that you're in, the circumstances that you face, the thought forms which will look like people, demons, entities, pretty much the things that you're afraid of will show up in this dimension. You hear this within spiritual scriptures all the time, facing your demons. Matter of fact, when I first heard that, I think it was in a Japanese scripture when I was a kid. And I loved that thought, that idea of facing your demons. How you could take this substance and all of a sudden everything that's been bothering you, you get to battle head on. So don't freak out when you hear about the notion of facing your demons. Rather think about it in the sense of, once you face them, who will you become? And where will you go? Usually, and this is pretty cool because you don't have to always go straight to your worst nightmare, which is fashioned out of your imagination. Usually, 
it will be bits and pieces of your nightmare which you'll battle. And hopefully, you will come to the realization that you are creating these figments of your imagination manifest right in front of you before you get to that place that encompasses every facet of your worst nightmares. Okay. Then, you don't have to experience it. You'll instantly become, well, enlightened. You'll know what's going on. You, know, you, you would have hacked the game. And then you look around. The darkness begins to clear. Clouds maybe even start to part, depending on your nightmare. Color with me, the saturation within the room went up. All of my demons disappeared. And... The little hummingbird, which was an entity who took the form of this spirit animal, came through my window, hummed right here. You know how their head stays still and their body just starts to move? And it told me, pretty much, congratulations. You figured it out. Now you don't have to be there. Ever. Ever again. Now you get to go to the higher dimensions. And that was when I transitioned from the etheric plane of thought, dealing with my own demons. And then I went up to the higher planes of existences, which deal with deities and angelic beings, which, by the way, don't have wings, as you would see it in the Bible. They do have things that come out of their back, and they do have halos, but they don't look like well, how they're depicted in art. They look more like energy streams, because your astral body has this crack down the back of your spine, and that's where your energy permeates from and it encompasses your energy body and it looks like wings to somebody who's trying to match it to something that they know. Not only that, but you do have these orbs of light that are spread out throughout your body. One of which becomes so bright around here that it does have this kind of rainbow effect, which then makes it look like you've got this huge halo. Okay, not this little gold thing that hangs around up here about two feet from your head, but this huge halo. It's like the size of a basketball hoop maybe bigger, and it lays like this on the back of your astral body. And that deals with well, a specific stage in your ascension within your awareness. That's when you become that well, figure of an angelic being. So does this mean that angels exist? I mean, if angels exist, or at least these beings that are being depicted as angels, then does that mean God exists? And if God exists, then does that mean that well, heaven exists? Well, this video was supposed to just be on, does hell exist? Well, that would be your own internal damnation, dealing with what you expect of the afterlife, which is a direct reflection of how you judge yourself, your actions, and overall your character, okay, your time here on earth. That being said, you actually judge yourself within the afterlife. No God is doing it for you, but you. I believe I made a video on that already, dealing with karma. And I talked about why people feel the need to be judged by an exterior force. Check that out, I'll either leave the link in the description below or I'll put an annotation somewhere. But I'm pretty sure I've made a video on that already. So in relation to being judged and doing the bad thing, let's explore belief that everyone's been taught throughout school, RE, religious education, and within life. That is, bad people go to hell. This might annoy a lot of people. This might frustrate and anger, vex a lot of people. But this is how it works. If the person who's doing the wrong deed believes that it is just, believes that it is for the right reasons, then that person will not go to hell or will not be within their own creation of hell. Obviously. If they don't believe that they should be judged, if they don't believe that they've done anything wrong, then why would they create that expectational future for them within the afterlife? And again, it all boils down to being judged. Do you believe that you're in the wrong? This is why you can get people out there who will kill people, you know, to save a life or to save their own life in self-defense. Or maybe will kill themselves if their head screwed on tight. Say, for example, if a person had to take their own life in order to stop a terrorist from blowing up a building and killing a bunch of people, okay? They made that deal with that one person who's got a gun to their head, and then that person pulls the trigger. Do you honestly expect that person to go to hell? Now, you're probably thinking, no, he'll be rewarded, right? 
because that's what you see in movies. If you sacrifice your life for the good of others, then well, you'll go to heaven. Now, higher beings do take this into consideration. Yes. But this doesn't mean that you're going to go to hell because you took your own life. This means that he was emotionally balanced, his head was screwed on tight, meaning he was very logical at that point in time. So when he pulled the trigger, he actually went to a place which was reflective of his own inner state, which is basically a ticket straight upstairs. Upstairs meaning straight to the high dimensional realms of existences. Because when you operate from a frequency of love and not fear, when you don't doubt what you're doing, when you don't have any thoughts meandering within the back of your subconscious mind telling you to do the opposite thing, you won't go into a thought-based existence within the afterlife, be that the etheric realm, and you won't go to any lower dimensional realm neither. Now, you can access that state of well-being within a meditation and constantly throughout life so that when you do astral project, you go straight to the high dimensions. If you do die, inconveniently, you will go straight to the high dimensions. You don't have to sacrifice yourself to go up there because nobody's handing out tickets. You know, nobody is saying, do this, then we'll pull you up. Where you end up within the afterlife is solely predicated upon how you act within this life and how you judge yourself based on those actions within this incarnation. So you hold all the power when it comes to where you go after you die. You will not go to hell because hell, as it's told in the scriptures, or at least as it's interpreted from the scriptures, does not exist. Be that this spiritual plane where your soul goes once you've done bad things. Now, maybe within the scriptures, they're actually hinting at something else. Maybe some kind of underworld that exists within 3D, you know, if you really want to theorize about it. But on a soul level, hell doesn't exist. Bad people don't go to hell. If you're emotionally unbalanced, if you're mentally unbalanced, and then you pass on, you create that well, unbalanced reflection within your environment until you face those demons and get over it. I'm Ryan JC Ryan, James Cropper. This has been Your Potential. Subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos like this, and I'll speak to you all pretty soon. Peace.